Hello everyone, this is Dr. Clark. I want to talk to you today about um, what causes the brain to misfire. So if you have a brain-based problem, you have a, a brain that's misfiring, and it can misfire in a number of ways. You can have overfiring, underfiring, or just dysregulation of brain firing or brain waves. And so you're going to need to get the brain back into sync. We'll talk more about that another time, about how brain-based therapy and neurofeedback and nutrition and chiropractic and things can help balance the brain. But I want to talk to you about how did it get dysregulated? How did it start misfiring in the first place? Well, there's a number of reasons, but it basically comes back to one thing that uh, Dr. D.D. Palmer said in 1895 when he discovered chiropractic. He said that all illnesses start because of one thing, and that is stress. And he's still right today, and he defines stress in three ways. He said there's emotional stress, there's physical stress, and there's chemical stress. And so basically what causes the brain to misfire is some type of stress. And so let's look at these and let's kind of identify which ones are emotional, which ones are physical, which ones are chemical. Well, blood sugar imbalances are a huge problem for your brain, and obviously that's a chemical problem. You're not getting the proper levels of fuel for your brain cells. Stress, I'm talking here about emotional stress, is also a huge problem, and it causes the brain to dysregulate. It causes cortisol to go up because you're under stress. And then cortisol begins to affect your hippocampus. So the cells in the hippocampus have a lot of uh, cortisol receptors, and literally it burns out the hippocampus uh, area of your brain and your temporal lobe, and then you end up with short-term memory issues. You end up with ADD-type symptoms. You end up with emotional control problems. You end up with even hormone imbalances because all those things are done in that area. Poor circulation and oxygen is a chemical stress. You must have oxygen uh, and sugar and glucose for fuel. Food sensitivities are going to cause inflammation. Inflammation is the enemy of your brain. This is also a chemical issue. And then poor gut function ties closely to that because if you don't have good gut function, you don't have good brain function. There's a direct connection between the brain and the gut. And by the way, the brain can also cause poor gut function as well. Inflammation, we've already talked about. That can be caused from a number of reasons. Food sensitivities, poor gut function, chronic infections, and so forth. Uh, poor neurotransmitters. If you don't have good nutrition, you don't not able to produce good neurotransmitters, you can have problems. Uh, for instance, if you have poor GABA uh, production, you may end up with anxiety. If you have poor serotonin, you may end up with depression. If you have a lack of dopamine, you may end up with um, a lack of motivation or tremors or a number of other things. It can even affect your thyroid function. And then lastly, if you end up with um, like too much uh, glutamine, you can actually end up with everything being hypersensitive and a lot more pain, by the way. Uh, hormone imbalances, again, emo uh, chemical and emotional stressors there. Uh, poor essential fatty acids. Your brain is made mostly of essential fatty acids. If you don't have good fatty acid intake, you're going to have poor brain function. Toxins are going to cause a huge effect on the brain. If they get across, uh, across the blood-brain barrier and into the brain, toxins are going to be very destructive to your brain function. And then lack of activity. Lack of activity is a physical problem. And, and this can also include traumas, by the way. So if you have a car accident or a fall, this is common with kids. They have a fall and they hit their head, and then they know their parents notice a few months down the road the child is beginning to regress. They're, they're not talking as much as they used to or whatever. It's because of inflammation in the brain and lack of stimulation. So the brain needs activity, and it needs stimulation. And so these are just some of the things, but these are the major 11 reasons why your brain begins to misfire. Now, when you start to evaluate your own brain, you say, okay, how many of these things are going on in my case? And if you've got any of these, let me tell you, you need to have your brain checked out. And then if, if there is weakness, have it treated functionally to restore the function and, and brain back to its optimal levels. So God bless. Have a great day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.